Prior to removing the balloon from the bag, carefully observe where the neck is located. Once you have located the neck, you could pull the balloon out of the bag, being careful to only touch the balloon on the neck. The neck is identified by um, being thicker than the rest of the balloon. Once you remove the balloon from the bag, carefully lay it out so that there are no wrinkles or, um, or folds in the balloon. Then, carefully insert the nozzle into the neck of the balloon and secure the balloon to the nozzle. If you do not have an automatic inflation system like we have here, all you simply need is a nozzle or a hose into the balloon and some way to measure the amount of lift that you have. A simple weight will suffice. Just inflating the balloon until it picks the weight off the ground or off of a table will work just fine. If you do not, if you do not have weights, you may simply inflate the balloon about five or six minutes. Once the balloon is secured on the nozzle, you may begin the inflation process. If you are working by yourself, you'll need about or two pieces of string in order to tie off the balloon. One about four feet long and another about two feet long. Once you have your length of string, take the longer string and wrap it around the back side of the neck and draw the lengths until they are equal on each side. Then make an X and loop the, the higher string through the other string, just like the first stage of tying your balloon. As you reach the neck, position the string so that it's about a half inch above the nozzle. Then bring each side of the string back around the balloon and keep repeating the same X pattern over and over until the string covers about one half inch or 13 millimeters of the neck. Once you have the neck thoroughly covered, make a final knot. Once you have completed the knot, tie the two ends of the string together. The easiest way is to make the two ends parallel, wrap them around your finger, creating a loop, and pull the two ends of a string through the loop. Once you have tied off the neck of the balloon, um, you can remove it from the nozzle and hook it to either a hook, a nail, something to keep the balloon steady. At this point, you may tie the bottom of the neck of the balloon to the rest of the neck. Take your other piece of string and wrap it around the balloon just as before. Now, you may tie the two ends of a string together just like you did before. I would advise to feed at least one end of the string through your loop that's already made, just for backup purpose. At this point, we could begin assembly of the flight train. The natural order is to have the balloon, parachute, string, and then the radiosonde. 
In high wind conditions, you may substitute a derailleur for the length of string. Unwrap the parachute. and remove any knots that they have put in the string. These are simply for shipping purposes and need to be removed so the parachute will open upon descent. Parachutes also vary by vendor, so the exact configuration may not exactly match this parachute. Tie the top of the parachute to the bottom of the balloon. You may use the loop that you created earlier when tying off the bottom of the neck. And the bottom of the parachute is where you would attach the radius on string or the derailleur. The normal length of string that you should use is 80 to 100 feet or 25 to 30 meters. Simply, simply insert the string into the loop in the bottom of the parachute and tie it with a knot. The final step in the balloon flight train preparation is to attach the prepared radiosonde to the end of the string. Make two loops of the string through the radiosonde's attachment point prior to knotting the string.